Hi everyone, Big Thinny Bang Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another edition of List, List Week. Week 2020. It's time for some of the best lists. I am getting into my 50 favorite top 50 50 yes great singles of 2020 oh this this was a big one guys this was a big one i started with a group of like 170 songs it took me like forever to whittle it down to 50 and believe me it was hard there were a lot of records and tracks i would have loved to have kept on this list i could have even done a list of 100 songs if i wanted to but you know what maybe keeping it this trim has resulted in a batch of songs that, you know, I'm, I'm really like picking the most slappinest slappers. And that's even after I have a handful of honorable mentions here that I want to work in really quickly. Uh, one, I want to shout out 645 AR uh, with uh, For the Trap uh, for the, the wonderful way that he kind of uh, reinvented vocals in a hip-hop context and uh, uh, really kind of drove uh, his name to viral fame this year. Also, Mario Judah with Bia! Uh, I love that with that track, he essentially drove Playboy Cardi to uh, drop Whole lot of Red this year, so that's a wonderful thing. John Prine also came out with a uh, great posthumous single this year. I remember everything that was uh, all kinds of moving and uh, definitely worth a nod, even if it's not one of my favorite tracks of his uh, of all time. There's also that Tyler the Creator epilogue type single that was dropped that sort of seemed like, you know, a bit of a back end of a continuation of the storyline from Igor that, uh, again, not one of my favorite tracks he's ever done, but if you're a fan of the Igor album concept and narrative, uh, it's certainly worth a listen. Best Interest is the title. And then finally, I want to give a shout out to Sufjan Stevens for America, which I think was probably the biggest, boldest, most lumbering and uh, politically aware single that dropped in 2020. This thing is like a 12-minute multi-phased monster anthem that uh, I admit I don't go back to all that often, but I still do uh, look upon it as a, as a significant single moment in 2020. So yeah, those are my quick single honorable mentions for the year. Beyond that, we have the core top 50, the first leg of which I would like to go over rather quickly and then get into a bit more feeling and detail as we pass or near the halfway point of the list, as usual, like we do every year. Just want to give you a heads up on that as usual. Uh, I think uh, we know what's going to go on here now, so let's do it! Number 50. It is the harrowing and narrative-driven science fair from Black Country New Road. 49. It's the powerful and posthumous single from Juice World. Righteous. 48. We have Freddie Gibbs and Big Sean teaming up with Hit Boy for Four Things. Then 47, it's uh, Phoebe Bridgers with the heart-wrenching Kyoto. 46, it's Pop Smoke and Rowdy Rebel on the Drill Banger Make It Rain. Following that at 45, Joji on the powerful and emotional statement Run. 44, Run the Jewels craft a wonderful boom bat banger on Ooh La La. And then it's Creatures from Viagra Boys, the freaky, scuzzy, new wave anthem from them. 42, Terrace Mar Martin, Denzel Curry, and company make one of the most essential anti-cop bops of the year. Then at 41, it is the smooth and mesmerizing Do It from Chloe and Hallie. Number 40, Dua Lipa, Break My Heart, one of the sleekest and snappiest pop anthems of the year. Fantastic baseline too. Number 39, Roddy Rich, The Box, who can forget that one? Uh, on top of that, we have Rico Nasty at 38, iPhone, she goes hyper pop on that one. Then at 37, JPEG Mafia drops some of his most infectious and catchiest flows ever on Bald. 36, Cupcake discounts lyrically. This is one of her most savage moments ever. She's just really like at her most witty, at her most 
Relentless, Unstoppable. Uh, following that at 35, it is Thundercat, a Dragon Ball Do-Rag, one of the catchiest, sweetest cuts of the year. Following that at 34, we have Code Orange underneath the title track to their new record, which is heavy, multi-phased, soaring chorus as well. Just love the band's fusion of metal and electronic aesthetics on this one. 33, it's Bree Runway and Young Baby Tate on Damn Daniel, one of the biggest bangers of the year. An even bigger banger after that at 32 is Little Texas Dreaming with a Danny L. Harl from the PC Music Camp. Lord, this is one of the most abrasive and hardest hitting electronic songs of the year. Then at 31, it is the multi-phased black metal classical epic Shem's Lament from Liturgy. On 30, we have a sharp combination of country and soul. Great songwriting, fantastic vocal performance too. Chris Stapleton on Cold. 29, Australian singer and songwriter Kieran J. Callanan once again shows us what new wave perfection sounds like on this wonderful anthem, You're Gonna Miss Me When I'm Gone. 28 is Eminem with I think one of the more musically sound singles he's dropped in a while that is Darkness, which not only features a Simon and Garfunkel interpolation that is uh, worked in pretty tastefully, but uh, lyrically it's one of his most high concept and I think disturbing songs ever, putting himself in the mind of uh, the Las Vegas shooter at that uh, concert years ago. And uh, again, if you have not heard this track, it's uh, uh, quite an undertaking, lyrically, conceptually, everything. I think it's one of his most daring songs ever. 27, it's Perfume Genius with On the Floor. On this one, I think Mike sets yet another bar for himself when it comes to uh, his own ability his own knack for pop songwriting. And at 26, it is Lingua Ignota with the incredibly harrowing, heavy, and shocking Oh Ruthless Great Divine. 25 sees Bon Iver and Taylor Swift crossing paths and breaking hearts on the folklore epic Exile, a track that touched even me this year, and frankly, I can't wait to see how many Netflix series and movie soundtracks it somehow lands in. 24 is pop artist extraordinaire Rina Sawayama with her track Excess, a materialism anthem that instrumentally sounds like it's straight out of the 2000s. Great vocal performance on it, too. 23, it's Fiona Apple with Shimiko, which I think makes for one of the most formative and personal songs any songwriter has put out in 2020. 22, Arca teams up with Rosalia for a uh Potentially the most insane, glitchy, futuristic, and cutting-edge piece of reggaeton to ever be recorded and released. Like, this, this is insane. I could listen to an entire album of this. Whatever Arca does in the future past this point, I hope it kind of circles back to this, at least a little bit. And at 21, Anderson Pack does an amazing job of not only just songwriting, groove creating as usual, but just capturing a socio-political moment on the track Lockdown, where lyrically he does a stellar job of just reflecting on all of the Black Lives Matter protests, the pandemic, how all of this intersects. So amen once again to Anderson Pack for just continuing to uh, put out great stuff. The number 20 single on our list is Gorillas sounding their most gorillas ever on Pac-Man featuring Schoolboy Q from from 2D's vocals, to the cartoony and quirky production, to the multi-phased lyrical epic that Schoolboy gives us on this one. It's uh, just peak Gorillaz in every way that it could possibly be. I mean, Gorillaz is just sounding great in 2020, and it's cool that, uh, you know, the old formulas still kind of work. Number 19 is Charlie XCX with the heart-wrenching glitch pop epic uh, that is forever. Number 18 is TK Maidza with one of the best and hardest bangers of the year shook. Number 17, it is distorted vocals and driving house rhythms on Disclosure's My High with Amine and Slow Tie, one of the weirdest combinations and crossovers of the year for sure, but somehow it works. I mean, it's so friggin' good, it makes me wish the clubs were open so it, we could hear it in the club! At number 16, Bring Me the Horizon not only brings back some amazing alt and new metal vibes with Parasite Eve, but it also works as uh, an immense critique of uh, societal shortcomings and uh, our hellish pandemic 
current day at the moment too. Will humanity, once it moves past this moment, learn any lessons from this? Uh, we don't know. Number 15 is the mystical enchanting Nada from Lido Pimienta, the record it comes from. She finds ways of fusing art pop and various strains of Latin music in a way that is uh, just, I guess, uh, uh, mystifying and wondrous. Number 14, it is clipping with Say the Name. I love David's lyricism on this one. I love the driving grooves. I love the Nine Inch Nails-esque instrumental shift at the very end. I love the Ghetto Boys sample cycling in the background, too. The grimy, heavy bass, how creepy and uh, eerie the song is. I mean, just some of Clipping's best work to date. 13 is Idols with Model Village, a groovy, driving, raging, post-punk banger that also works as a sharp critique of small-town sheltered living. U.S. Girls for American Dollars lands at number 12, which I think is a, a one of the best pop anthems of the year. Some disco grooves worked into the instrumental as well, and uh, vocally and lyrically. I just love how the song is essentially a critique of uh, societal and financial inequity. And Megan Thee Stallion lands at number 11. I know that she dropped a number of great singles this year. It was actually difficult to center in on one. Again, this is just a personal choice. I think many out there uh, may prefer other tracks she dropped, but uh, I love Girls in the Hood. I think uh, lyrically this just kind of paints Megan's musical persona to a T. I love the instrumental. I love the flows. I think the chorus is really sharp too. I think it's one of her best songs of 2020. And honestly, you could pop any Megan the Stallion song into uh, this little spot here because, uh, I mean, her singles were just kind of on fire throughout the year. And now we're finally in our top 10. Let's do it. Let's go. With uh, number 10, I had to pick a uh, rumor. Rascal, the uh, <laughs> sudden out of nowhere country trap ballad that uh, uh, has has really moved me to tears. And uh, I just love the motivational, inspirational lyrics. I just love the uh, vocals on this one. And while uh, I, I think Rumor has, has not quite put out a song this year that moved me as much as this one, I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of holding out hope. I'm still uh, sitting here fingers crossed and, and really just uh, uh, just wishing, wishing on a star that uh, uh, trap country balladry uh, continues to be this magical for uh, the rest of this decade. Number nine, it is Leanne Le Havas doing a wonderful and breathtaking rendition of Radiohead's Weird Fishes. Uh, just a great centerpiece to her new LP, and I love what she does with the track vocally and instrumentally. It's just a, a powerful, again, rendition of the song and a great cover and I think a, a good single and teaser to her new self-titled LP. Number eight, I'm going to throw in what I think is the remix of the year that is 100 Gex, uh, Ringtone, Charlie XCX, Caro Caro Benito, and especially Rico Nasty, who takes up a good section of the track too. Just love the vocal trade-offs on this one, love the energy, love that every guest compliments this song so perfectly. Uh, just love the, the instrumental revisions, too. It's just a fantastic remix that enhances the bass elements of the original song and expands from there, I think making it uh, even a little better in some respects and uh, really just celebrating some great artists as well, just inviting some great artists on. So, yeah, love it. Oh, my boy's got his own ringtone. Number seven, it is HMLTD with Blank Slate. I just think this is one of the best rock anthems of the year. I love the lyrical sentiment as well. It really kind of questions uh, humanity's... I guess, a future and destiny and sort of puts us in control of that. If only we weren't being herded mentally like cattle into uh, all of these awful societal structures and norms and expectations. But I think this track is a great push to sort of move beyond all of that and hopefully work toward a better, more equitable future. I know that uh, 2020 hasn't really given us much to, uh, you know, look forward to or hope for at this point, but, uh, you know, every once in a while I like to 
put this song on as a, as a bit of a pep talk, and uh, it, it works. At least for me, it does work. Number six, it's Dorian Electra with My Agenda. God, the way this track fuses hyper pop and glitch pop and metal with not only Pussy Riot, but uh, the village people. Yeah, all of that is somehow happening on this song, and Dorian Electra, they just continue to be one of the most exciting artists out there in music today. Number five, it is some lyrically perceptive and touching jazz rap from Blue and Exile with The Feeling. I think this song is one of the most moving lyrical displays of the year. The instrumental is uh, quite wonderful too. I just think it uh, doesn't really need a whole lot of explaining. It's just touching, it's thoughtful, it's reflective, and uh, I just love that this track and the album that it comes from I think is one of the strongest uh, statements in rap music of the year. Number four, it is the biggest dance anthem of the year, Spotlight, from Jessie Ware, the wonderful intro track to her new record, What's Your Pleasure? You know, this track isn't just a, a groovy, driving, just sparkling throwback to the disco era, touched up with gorgeous strings. This thing feels like gaining entry into the dance realm. No, this is not just a song. It's a time. It's a place. It's a dimension. It's a vibe. Number three, it is the incredibly catchy stripped back and odd At The Door from The Strokes, a standout single from their newest LP that I think breaks the classic formulas of the band down to the barest of elements for a song that I think is one of the band's darkest and most emotionally cutting too. It's just a great track all around. I love how simple and raw it is. I'm especially impressed with Julian's uh, vocal performance on this one. And uh, yeah, all around amazing track and a song that I have been continually coming back to in 2020. Number two, I think you guys knew this track was going to pop up here at some point, but uh, yeah, that's got to be Cardi B with Megan The Stallion on WAP. Yeah, in 2020, I was just Feeling that whap. I don't know what else to say. Love that instrumental. <laughs> Love that vocal sample, which I think is quite funny. Uh, I think Cardi is on point lyrically, very witty. I think Megan matches her energy perfectly. I think they make a great tag team on this track. And uh, who can deny this chorus as well? I mean, I know this song has been quite polarizing this year, but uh, yeah, I've, I've been down with it. Which leads me to my number one pick, and yeah, that's got to be uh, good news. Mac Miller posthumous single, good news, which uh, many of you may remember did really tear me apart emotionally. But uh, I think, uh, you know, as we kind of drew further and further into this uh, hellscape of a year, I think that uh, uh, this song became more and more, I guess, relevant and um, more of, I, I guess, just a uh, 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 something that haunted me throughout the year because its themes of depression and giving up and struggling and isolation and so on and so forth. I feel like all of that was just uh, exacerbated and for many people kind of like a universal experience through this year. Uh, it's, it's you know, not only really telling of Mac's mindset during the time when uh, he wrote this and, you know, up to that point where he passed, but it's, it's also really telling, I think, for a lot of people who have kind of gone through uh, what happened this year too. You know, it, it feels like the song is a part of the past. It's a part of the future. It's a part of just like everything that kind of just transpired Inspired since it came out. Plus, on top of it, I think most of us were sort of dying for some good news in concept throughout uh, the entirety of this year. Uh, you know, I, I think this song for me emotionally and uh, conceptually just really kind of uh, predicted and uh, uh, just embodied the year, even though Mac created it at a time where it was coming from more of a personal place, and he couldn't have possibly known what was coming around the corner. But uh, yeah, you know, in, in a way, I think it was eerily reflective of everything that came after. So yeah, that's personally what I think I had to uh, go with for my number one song of the year. And uh, yeah, those are my singles. Those are my singles for 2020. Make sure to let me know down in the comments what you felt like uh, were the singles of the year for you.
I appreciate you watching this video and you know just continually rocking with me uh, from year to year, sticking with me through this year and checking out the reviews as you guys usually do. Transition, have you given any of these tracks a listen? Did you love them? Did you hate them? What would you rate them? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next or list out next? Uh, again, all of the uh, uh, information that uh, you'll need is linked down below, you know, other uh, list videos and all that stuff. And again, in the comments, let us know what maybe were your top 10 or top 20 songs of, uh, of this year. Anthony Fantano, lists, 2020, uh, forever.